Welcome back. We're going to take some time to talk about the big story in the sports world world from this week. Let's wrap a bow on this year's NBA season and the NBA Finals. Yeah, you saw the Warriors win the NBA title once again right here on 47 ABC last night. Let's check out how they got it done. So uh, let's go out there to game six from TD Garden in Boston. The Warriors look to finish out the series with three straight victories. Jason Tatum starting strong. But as our own meteorologist Ulysses Garcia says, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. He finished with 100 turnovers in the playoffs. That is an NBA record. First player to ever do that. Yep. All right, Jordan Poole pulling up from three and down she goes. Turnovers would plague Boston though, like we talked about with Tatum. 22 of them last night. This one's going to lead to a fast break bucket right there. I believe that's Andrew Wiggins. Mm -hmm. What a series he had. Yeah, he was great. He was absolutely integral and important for the Warriors. And Draymond Green making the pass to Clay Thompson. And that was also the difference this year, or at least a big difference. Clay was out the last two years, and he comes yep. back. And he completes the Warriors. Steph stepped up in a big way, hitting the three, scoring 34 in the closeout game. They're champs yet, yet again. You see the celebration. celebration. You see the four the titles in the last eight seasons. They're happy in the locker room. A dynasty in the making right now. They, a lot of people counted them out, me included, but they're still here. And let's hear more from some of them after the win. Uh, that's why I said I think this championship hits different. That's why I had so many, so many emotions and still will just because of what it took to get back here. Well, they're all unique. They're all special. Um, <clears throat> I think this one may have been the most unlikely just from the standpoint of where we've been the last couple of years. A lot of unknowns with injuries to Clay. And, um, you know, Draymond at the end of the year, Steph at the end of the year. No, Brandon, it was a tough watch for me. You know, I, 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 I took a stand for multiple reasons. I thought the Celtics were going to win in seven. I thought they had different matchup advantages, but they just couldn't take advantage. They couldn't execute, and they obviously couldn't get over the hump, specifically offensively. Most of the time, a lot of defenses are, uh, would, excuse me, are what would fail teams, but offensively, the Celtics were just completely, they were, they were unraveled. I mean, Jalen Brown was up and down, down all series. Overall, he did do what he needed to do and played well enough to support Jason Tatum, but Jason Tatum really could not lead them and take them home, and I think that's probably the biggest yeah, reason. Yeah, I think that was the shocking part about this whole series was Jason Tatum disappearing. He, did, he really did disappear, especially you mentioned 100 turnovers. That is an NBA record. He was really bad all series from the floor as well. His percentages were below 40%. And for Someone did a great job putting that meme together of Wilt Chamberlain holding the 100. They yep. put the 100 in Jason Tatum's, Tatum's hands. Yep, they got to put his face on it because that's what it was. And it, the, the Warriors defense, I don't think it was just him choking. I won't say that, but I think it was the Warriors defense really applying a, a lot of great pressure because they have the experience and they, they've been here before and Jason Tatum just never was able to really adjust because he played the same way over and over again, made the same moves, resulted in the same missed shots and the same turnovers, and he never really changed together. his approach. They he didn't really switch other. it up. He tried They're the same honest, different moves, never really went to the post no, like that, and team. he kept trying to go left, and it would turn the ball over. It would be a bad shot, and the Warriors' big three, they're old, and they're they're older, and they're, you know, they've been, they have a lot of miles on that uh, uh, tread on their tires, but that's just a testament to the greatness of Steph Curry. I will give him credit for that because this is one of the, you know, one of the examples in his career where he didn't have a super team behind him, where his teammates were doing a lot for him, where he could just lay back and kind of coast to a ring. He was obviously by far the most important and best player on his team. He obviously had a lot of great support from the coaching staff. They obviously you need your great coaches, and they're not winning this title without Wiggins, Kevon Ludi, and Jordan Poole. But notice how I didn't mention Clay Thompson and Draymond Green. I, in my opinion, Clay Thompson was bad. For, uh, offensively, defensively, he was pretty good, but offensively, he was bad for most of the series. And then Draymond, I mean, he was in the, you know, in the national news the entire time, <laughs> almost single-handedly. Draymond did what game. Draymond does. You know, Draymond was doing Draymond games, having two points, four points, but he did have a great game six. So the inexperience for the Celtics kind of caught up with them, and it showed by their inability to make adjustments. And you know, the Warriors did, and so that's why they won the series. And Again, I was wrong. I, I will admit when I was wrong. I, yeah, I you said Boston Gate in seven. seven. Yep. I said Warriors in, in six. six. I'll give you. You definitely saw it. I, I, I thought. Was it after have... Game Three? 
that we talked about this last week, or yeah. was it after game four? I think it was after game three. Uh -huh. So the Celtics were up two to one. They would never lose. I think I jinxed them. They never lost. They never won another game. I, I really do think that uh, after about three games or so, both teams knew who the better team was, and I yeah. think the Golden State was clearly the better team in this series, and I think Boston knew that as well. But, hey, uh, first of all, got to talk about it. The Warriors, they are back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they haven't had Klay Tom Thompson the last two years because of injury, and you see what type of a different team they are now that they have Klay Thompson yep. back yep. on the floor. Yep. Uh, the core is still there. You still got Curry, Klay Thompson, uh, and uh, Draymond Green, and let's not forget Andre Iguodala, the former right. Sixer, yep. who went out there, his Four fourth rings. title, Four went rings. to Miami the last two years. He's a key part of that team as well sure off is. of the bench. Great yep. veteran as a coach, presence. Yep, as a coach. And you could even see how he was coaching Jordan Poole and Gary Payton Jr. when they were coming out the games because obviously this was their first time in the playoffs. But Iggy, he's been there multiple different times, even with Philly and with Denver before right. he got to Golden State. So he made it a, a big impact as well. Well, Curry definitely deserved that oh, MVP yeah. after uh, his Game 4 performance and then last night dropping 34-7-7. Uh, what do you have to say about him getting finals MVP? That's the that's one of the only things he doesn't have on his resume aside from the gold medal with Team USA. Right. So I, I think that he obviously completely deserved it. I don't think obviously like Wiggins, Kevon Looney, Jordan Poole, they don't win without those guys. But it's, it's clear as day. He was by far the best player, not only on the Warriors this time around, but also the Celtics. It was it was they the same defense that locked up Kevin Durant and gave Giannis troubles and Jimmy Butler troubles at, at different times. Steph Curry, besides, you know, he had a couple bad games, but for the most part, he was doing whatever he really wanted to do. And Boston just kept shooting themselves in the feet. And Steph Curry had been here multiple times before, and he took advantage of it. Right. So he definitely deserves the Finals MVP award. I, again, I, I'm not his biggest fan, but <laughs> at the end of the day, I can admit when he definitely played well enough to earn that title. And I think he kind of, as you mentioned, I mean, gold medal, is one thing, but the finals MVP was the one thing that was missing for his career for it to be complete. And now that he has four rings, he's officially the best player on a, leading his team to a championship. There's no asterisks or anything like this on this ring and a finals MVP plus M regular season MVPs and everything else that he's done to impact the game. His career is really cemented. There's really nothing that you can really say. Yeah, kind of like Kobe Bryant when he won in 2009. Mm -hmm. He didn't have Shaq. Uh, he had Shaq for those first three. Right. So th that was uh, the first time Kobe, you could say, won the title on his own. Right. Or not on his own, but led the team. See, right. Uh, same with Steph Curry this year. I, I would I would argue that Steph Curry was the leader of that team back in 2015 that yeah. won. But he didn't win the finals. MVP. So, like, he was, and he was definitely the best player. But they didn't give him the finals MVP award. A lot of it has to do with the narrative and, and how well LeBron played. But this year, there's no like there's no quest. There's no quest. He was unanimous this time. So there was no questions about it. And like now he can finally kind of put that lay that to rest. And I think that for him going forward, I think this is something that they, they're not going to go away. Now, one more thing that I want to talk about here is a lot of people are saying Steph Curry top 10 or not. Personally, I hate talking about players and greatest of all time arguments yeah. when they are still playing. Yeah. Because it's so hard to judge when a player right. is still in the middle of his career. Uh, what do you think about that argument? Let's go ahead and talk about that you, for a couple so seconds. So before we even get into that, you're right, because it's very subjective and it's also kind of disrespectful to players from 40, 50, 60 years ago because it's hard to kind of compare the advantages that players have now to how they played back then, and it's not fair to them. But to answer your question directly, do I think he's still a top 10 player? No. I, I don't. Yeah, of all time. All time. All time. Like in the NBA right now, I, b b beyond obviously. But in terms of all time, no. I, I I would put Michael Jordan ahead of him, LeBron, Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem, Magic yeah. Johnson, Larry Bird, Kobe, Shaq, Tim Duncan, and Hakeem Olajuwon, yeah. which is off the top of my I, head. I agree with with all of those as well. Uh, but I, we're getting the rap signal. They're yeah. telling us to wrap <laughs> this thing up and uh, send it on to break. Go ahead, Devin. All right. So the weather outside was almost as hot as Steph Curry in game six yesterday. I didn't want to read that, but we will see some relief. And just like the season's finally over, give me some relief, Chief Meteorologist Switch Wurzik. Hopefully the weather can come down and we can have a good time outside this week. Hi, my name is Jaden Jones. I play for Cambridge South Dorchester and you're watching Del Marva Sports Insider.